Uh, it's too late for this recording. So many important things were said. But as we know you, we, there will follow many more. <laughs> rade, rade. I also think that this is a very uh, important point, actually, how to learn things, actually. So after all, what we want to learn here is we want to learn love again. The highest state of love, pure, unconditional love we want to get again, which actually we are made for <laughs> the soul, not the wrong ego. <laughs> so even in the material world, if you want to have some job, like you want to make furniture, maybe you can read it, you can study books, and you will never get it. But you can go to a person who did it for 20, 30 years, and he has a feeling for the wood, and he knows so many tricks, so many shortcuts. And when you go to him and he likes you, then he will give you all his secrets, which he was actually taking so much time. It took him maybe 20 years to get this point. But anyway, he will just give it to you because he loves you, because you are coming in a loving mood. Because actually humble means loving mood. You cannot be humble without love. It's not possible. So if we come in a loving mood and we want to learn that, he will give all his secrets. So actually, even in the material world, we can see that this is actually the process. It's not that we just Google it. <laughs> Nowadays, people want just to learn something by Google it, you know. I don't need any teacher or any person who give me something. I can just Google it. I know everything. No. Google is not giving any feelings, is not giving any real experience and no mercy. Definitely no mercy. So we should actually come in this loving, attracted way and beg for mercy. And this is actually, the whole path is all about this. So we can not consciously give up our false ego. It's also not possible. We have to accept the love as a gift and by the gift given to us, the false ego will behind one day more and more fall down like a table. You take some gift and you put it on a table and the table is maybe one meter long and you take the gifts from Rata, the new ones, and put always from one side and you push in this way, accept new, push in this way, accept new, push in this way. Behind the old stuff, one day, just fall off. That's the way actually to get rid of the old stuff, not by our endeavor. Our endeavor is, yes, I understand, I'm completely useless. I have no qualities. This is our endeavor. And please, 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 I need the mercy. I just want to give a picture. You know me. But sorry for that. Thank Art. you very much, Gauravani. Because we just tried to explain these few sentences of Baba to make more clear, to put a life in our own lives. And Chakshuji, now continue, please. 
So she how, will not come. No, how still in this paragraph? Okay. How can we yes? How can we serve like this? Unless our hearts are qualified for these feelings. We must transfer this joy to the heart of Mahabhav personified, Sri Radhika. That's the point. If we don't receive the proper transcendental feelings from those who already have these feelings, how we can properly serve Mahabhava Swarupini Radha Thakurani. In other words, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. So this is our sadhana. Like Gauravani said, to put, and this is all our endeavor. I pray for that mercy. I need that mercy if I really want to become Radhika's maidservant. Because another sentence is explaining, we must transfer this joy to the heart of Swamini. We, are, we have to understand, we sadhakas, we have to learn how to transfer the joy of devotion in the heart of Radhika, then it's Raga Bhakti. And from that position, Raghunath is serving Radharani because he or she, like Tulsi, perfectly knows Radhika's hearts. And Radhika also perfectly knows the hearts of her kinkari. So all the bhakti is going in one all around one essence heart. Not like a physical organ heart, but the concentration of all spiritual pure feelings, emotions, which can be perceived through the loving action. Raghunath, like a Tulsi, perfectly knows the heart of Radhika, and according to that, he is serving. And Radhika, this is another important point, and then she is receiving this seva. So serving and receiving the seva means complete pleasure for sevya. We must transfer this joy, these feelings to the heart of Mahabhava personified Shri Radhika. That's the role of the Manjaris. This is the essence of their existence. To transfer the feelings and which kind of feelings I can transfer to Radhika if I don't have a feelings <laughs> or if I have a wrong feelings in another Baba. No. Proper feelings proper bhav and proper seva or action. Then it's love in action. That is. Srila Narodam Thakur Mahashaya sings. The love of Radha and Krishna is purer than gold, molten a hundred thousand times. 
And this love makes high waves in the ocean of rasa. Let us relish this prema with our chakora bird-like eyes and meditate on this transcendental karma, Cupid Krishna and Rati Radhika, for they are the friends of ecstatic love. Sri Radhika is Krishna's dear most beloved. She is generally in opposition to him and she is very enchanting, having the luster of a golden Keshara flower. <clears throat> her red sari shows her passionate love for Krishna and her silken blue outer garments are very enchanting, decorated with jeweled ornaments. Drink their nectarian forms and pastimes with your eyes and sing their glories, being their female assistant absorbed in bliss. Nicely serve Kishora Kishori, who are unknown to the Vedic rules and who sit on the jeweled platform. Radhe. So we can hear from these three nice verses of Narottam Das Thakur. First of all, who are Radha and Krishna? Whom we want to serve with full love. And Narottam Das Thakur is giving description who are they. They are the source of that love, which is purer than gold, gold molten hundred thousand times. So this is attempt, just simple attempt of explanation and description who are the Radha and Krishna, using materialistic words and knowing that no materialistic words can explain Radha and Krishna. Narottam thus Thakur is saying they are purer than gold molten hundred thousand of times. So we know that gold is a very pure, but to receive the pure gold, we have to put it in the fire. That all impurities of original metal just evaporate or disappear. But to receive the pure gold, it should be put in the fire five times. After five times, it considered that gold is completely pure. In material, material worldly dimension. But Narutam Thakur is saying that Radha and Krishna are pure than hundred thousand times gold, pure. So it, he wants to say unlimitedly pure. I cannot find the words how I can compare them. So I'm using this simple example, a little bit exaggerating. And in that way, 
I am trying to explain their unique position and that they are worthy of worship. Then he is saying, he is describing Radhika and in the second words, he is explaining Radhika and in third words, he is explaining the way of meditation on this divine couple. Drink their nectarian forms and pastimes with your eyes and sing their glories. Meditate, sing, sometimes loudly sing, sometimes inside yourself, in the association of others, sometimes alone. What can we do? We don't have a choice. But always your heart should sing the glories of Radha and her beloved. And mind always to be merged in their pastimes. Then he is giving the process and he is continuing being their female assistant. Absorbed in bliss. Ragunath with bliss wants to serve Radhika. Ragunath wants with bliss to put Kajal around her eyes. With bliss he wants to put dots on her forehead. To put this beautiful garland of jasmine flowers on Radhika's lower show with the bliss, with happiness, with the joy. Like a female assistant. So Narutam is giving instruction, remove your bodily concept of life, your main men identification, Purusha Abhiman, and see yourself. Please. He's begging us. He's not ordering us, actually. <coughs> He's begging the conditioned soul, please, this is the way how you can finish this crazy existence. He's begging. All our acharyas are begging us even when their words are a little bit sharp, they are, they are the, our well-wishers. They are begging us. Please, for your benefit, do it. When they are sharp, they are like a parent's. I used all nice, polite words. Now the last thing is to be sharp. <laughs> Isn't it? We have similar experiences. So they are mixing nice, kind, sweet, polite words. And sometimes they put a little bit sharp words. But these words are all for our benefit. And to understand that we will receive that benefit. We need mercy to remove our false ego. Mercy. I cannot do it myself. But I can have a strong desire for that. Please, brothers, sisters. When we serve the Mahavani, the great words of the Acharyas, our hearts will become qualified. 
the Vani itself will bring the qualification. Only in the company of devotees one can blissfully discuss Krishna's Rasika pastimes in Raj in a loving, devotional way. This process of hearing, chanting, and remembering the Rasika pastimes of Raj is again illuminated by the best of devotional practice, Nam Sankirtan. Rade, before we start to listen glorification and importance of Nam Sankirtan, maybe we can also stop a little bit here, because this is the proof of previous statement. How to receive this infusion of pure devotion and pure emotion. How? What is the process? By serving the Maha Vani. By serving the great words of Rasik devotees. How we can serve? Now we are serving with the ears, with the tongue, with the mind, with the heart, and trying to apply these words in our daily life. <coughs> so, we, for Sadaka, it's so important to have a Shraddha and Nishta in these words. I'm not qualified. I'm useless. Worthless. But I have a Shraddha in their words because their words are not different from their realizations. And when my ears are in connection with their Mahavanis, all my existence is coming in connection with transcendental realm. Then these words will bring qualification. Baba is encouraging us. So these Zoom Sanghas, conversations with devotees, are actually serving the Mahavanis of our Acharyas. And they are our hope. And it said, only in the company of devotees one can blissfully discuss Krishna Rasik pastimes. And if you see in Prema Bhakti, uh, Prema Bhakti Chandrika on Bengali, it said, Kevala Bhakata Sangha. Not ordinary devotees, not other devotees. Kevala Bhakta. Pure Premika devotees who are diving in the mood, like Jayanandaji said, in the mood of Manjari Bhava. This kind of devotees and their company that we desperately need. And by sharing, hearing, discussing Rasika pastimes in Vraja, it's not said in Vaikunta, it's not said in Dvaraka, it's not said in Mathura, in Vraja, Rasik pastimes in Vraja with Rasik devotees who are Vraj devotees. Vraja Loka Anusarata. <clears throat> this is the pro process of proper practice, which sooner or later will give 
slowly but surely, realizations by their mercy. Yeah. Janada, do you want to say something or? Gauravani, everyone. So we need devotees in the same mood. If we are hankering for Vraja, we should approach to devotees who are in Vraja mood. But this is general. Again, this is general. We should define which kind of devotion I want to receive in my heart. Manjari Bhava, Sakhi Bhava, Sakha Bhava, Vatsalya. And when we receive, when we define and decide and assign, I could have said, assign which Bhava, then completely focus Ekanta, like a laser, on these scriptures and on this association. Because like Jayananda just said, someone who has another Baba cannot give Manjari Baba because he doesn't have. He is not even interesting in other Babas. <laughs> and what to speak about association with those who doesn't have any Babas. Like Gauravani said, they will give us just knowledge dry knowledge and information. So this is our responsibility. That. Sri Sanatan Goswami teaches in Brihat Bhagavatamrita. From devotional service that consists of meditating on the Raj pastimes and singing about them, and which is illuminated by Nam Sankitan of the Beloved, Raj Brahma will arise. Brahma will arise. <laughs> Not other Brahma. By meditating, devotional servant, meditating on Vraja pastimes, Vraj Lila, Vraj Prema will arise. If we meditate on other Lilas and we are always exposed our heart and ears to listen about another Lilas, which are also very nice, amazing, completely amazing. Vraj Prema will never appear in our heart. Because Vraj Prema has to be infused in our hearts. And about this subject, Vishwana Chakra Thakur is very nicely, elaborately, I remember his explaining is Madhurya Kadambini. Very, very nicely. That some Lilas, when devotee find and decide which Baba he wants, some Lilas in the Shastras, they can help him to attain this goal, to nourish his Baba, to relish. Some Lilas can bring him completely astray. And this is the example. We all know this example which is given to us about this Krishna Das Babaji. Many Krishna Das Babaji, but specific, who after 50 years of living in Raja, suddenly receive desire to go in Dvaraka. And Radhika so mercifully appears in his heart and said, don't do this. It's not my desire. I don't like it. Please. But he was very eager to see the world, 
to see the other things. So he went to Dwaraka. Why he went? There is different explanations. But I will repeat the explanation of Gurudev. Because he was not fixed in his bow. And he had the wrong association. Because some people, some pilgrimage came around him and pushed him, come on, come on with us. We are going. You are all life you are living in Vraja, you didn't see the other holy places. Come with us. And he was very young when he came in Vrindavan and he really never left Vrindavan before. And some desire to experience, to receive new experiences appear in his heart because of association and because of his not fixation in Staibab. Then he went to Dwaraka and received this tilak, marked tilak of Dwaraka in his forehead, came back in Vraja, and Radhika didn't react so nicely because he, she was not satisfied with him. So this, I make a shorter. So this is the example, what does it mean to follow devotional service in the mood of Vrajavasis, meditating on Vraja pastimes, and now singing the Hari Nama Sankirtana in the mood of Vrajavasis, Manjari Bhav. Mood is important in chanting the mantras. And the mood, the bhava, will bring result of chanting that mantra. But if devotee who is fixed in his desire to become Radhika's maidservant, for him or for her, Nama Sankirtana means I am glorifying the name of my beloved Ishtadev, Radhika. Inside of me, but also like a Sankirtana. Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe. And when I sing Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I always see Radhika in the center and Krishna who is always going around her and depending on her love. And Gurudev very nicely explained the meanings of Hare Krishna Mahamantra from the Manjari Bhava angle. So, Radhe Radhe. I'm sorry, devotees, if I offended someone with my words, but please forgive me. On this, Sri Sanatan himself comments. Although Gana or singing is the same as Nam Sankirtan of the beloved, <coughs> it is still mentioned separately because it is the most intimate item of loving devotional practice. Or the Nam Sankadan of the Beloved is separately mentioned because that is the definition of the treasure of Prem. Anandaji, please, would you be so kind to enlighten us with some your words and of explanation of this?
Maybe we can read again. <clears throat> Although Ghana or singing is the same as Nam Sankirtan of the Beloved. It is still mentioned separately because it is the most intimate item of loving devotional practice. Or the Nam Sankirtan of the Beloved is separately mentioned because that is the definition of the treasure of Prem. And is it okay for you? I think he hasn't heard you. Oh. Janandaji, you, you can hear me? Ready, ready? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. What did you ask, Uranga? Uh, I asked if can Jayanandaji explain this part of paragraph which Akshu about Ghana, Nama Sankirtana, <coughs> and the sep why it's separately mentioning here? Because we, we really want to understand. But so maybe Goranga, Goranga. You know, you can maybe explain first, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Okay, I'm sorry because I catch you uh, suddenly. <laughs> I tried to escape. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chakshuji, please read slowly. Although, and so on. Although Ghana or singing is the same as Nam Sankirtan of the Beloved, it is still mentioned separately because it is the most intimate item of loving devotional practice. Or the Nam Sankirtan of the Beloved is separately mentioned because that is the definition of the treasure of Prem. <clears throat> so we can see here singing of the holy name is like a Gana or Nama Sankirtana. So the both of them are singing and glorifying beloved Ishtadev. Both of them. And Baba is saying here, it will be very nice if Gurudev is listening to this and can explain more. But he said, it is still mentioned separately. Because it's most intimate item of loving devotional practice.
when my question is to myself also and to others when the glorification on the holy name is becoming most intimate loving devotional service when in which moment in which situation on what level we can say singing and glorifying the name is becoming intimate loving devotional service my humble opinion is which is coming to me in the moment when devotee feels such a intense loving intimacy with ishtada then starts intimate loving devotional practice in the form of glorifying the name singing the name hari nama sankirtana gana can means also alone singing but sankirtana means congregation singing and now the question is arise how congregational sankirtana of nama can be intimate if we have so many devotees 10 20 100 2000 devotees if all devotees are situated in the same mood then the number of devotees is not important actually it is increasing the glorification of beloved one ishtadev <clears throat> then this is the hari nama sankirtana golokera premadan this kind of sankirtana in the association of those in the same mood in the same bhava can bring the prema but one condition is important this group of sankirtan devotees who are singing hari nama sankirtan should be leaded with pure premika devotee if if the lead singer is not pure premika devotee group will receive some benefit but if we are following pure premika devotee prema rupaya in the same mood following his mood and there is a uh, hundreds of devotees around who are following then this hari nama sankirtana is intimate loving devotional service and brings treasure of prema so again we are coming of importance of kevala bhakti sangha tade rada kate yes udavaj it's udavaj i am yes udavaj i'm fo- i'm following closely an hour and a half and now i think um i have something to give 
Glorification in the Western sense is about making the distance greater between us and the divine. Saying that I am I am less like that great glorious thing. So if we want to understand glorification as it stands in the text, we cannot understand it in that Western sense, making a dictator out of our out of our beloved, out of our God. Glorification, therefore, must mean, and I'm just going right from my heart, I'm sorry. Um, it must be somehow intensifying the closeness we have with with the uh, with the divine. Glorification must be opening <clears throat> opening up the 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 sameness between our souls and the souls of the divine. It can never be a, a question of distance. It always has to be bringing closer, becoming more divine ourselves, becoming more um, glorious. I, I, I'm sorry to say it, to be becoming more glorious ourselves. Glorification has to mean discovering that we are glorious because we're lovers of Radhika. So, yeah. I'll leave there. <clears throat> Just an instinct. I'm sorry it's a bit vague and not very well argued. Thank you very much, Udavaji. Yes. Rade, Rade. Janya, Glorification. Can... Yes, please. So thank you very much, Goranga, Sundara Babu, and Uttara Babuji. So my understanding like this. Gana, so we, we say, Shurabanan, Kirutanan, Vishnu Sumaranam. We did, we did not say Shurabana Gana Vishnu Sumarana. So Gana means different kind of Gana. Sometimes Nama Gana was sometimes, you know, some kind of many song like Bhakti Binotaku, you know, Narottama Dask, Dastak, Rochana Dastak, many song or poet there. That's also considered as Gana. Probably, my understanding. So, even we see, if we check it out that Baba, Stai Baba, sometimes Gopi Baba, or sometimes Saki Baba, sometimes Manjari Baba, or sometimes Basere Baba, you know, sometimes Sakya Baba. So, many different Baba may be in this song, Ghana. So, but uh, Nama Sankirtan, Anandas Baba explained in Shikshashtaka in his book, Sankirtan means two meanings. Full glorification and complete glorification. That is Anandas Baba's definition. So, Nama, Nami, is same. But, you know, different, but the same. Especially Nama, we we say, so Gorang Sunapab say, we have intimate, expressed love. If we love somebody, naturally Nama is coming. Mm -hmm. So one sense, you know, if Gana means Nama, it's the same. But if different poet or different Baba contain, they may be different. So, this Baba say, Nama Sankirtan of beloved is separately mentioned because that definition of the treasure of Prema. So, we may understand that Prema we may interpret kind of Baba also. So, sometimes, it's Ghana, it's Nama, is maybe same, or same Baba may be same. But sometimes maybe song different Baba. So actually, you know, we are, we are, we are talking with Gurudev sometimes some song. 
Oh, this is actually Saki Baba. <laughs> or sometimes Sanchari Baba. So, but uh, we don't know this song is really help us to stay Baba. So, my understanding this Ghana Kirtan. So, what kind of Ghana is there? But the Nama is very simple. If beloved and Nama, Nama is the same. And also, if we have a, you know, Manjari style Baba, so automatically that Nama is, you know, some mood is there. But sometimes Ghana, like we see here in Braja, many Braja is singing, but many Braja is singing Gopi Baba and Saki Baba, not Manjari Baba. We, we find out. So I just to mention this, these things, Rade Rade. Rade Rade. Rade Rade Guru. Please help us. Ghana means singing. Only Manjari sing. And uh, Nama Sankirtan, when we are in the Viraha, we do closeness with Nama Sankirtan. When you are in Lila, you don't do the Nama Sankirtan. Then the mana you lose from your hands. When you go in Lila Chintan, then, and when you are in Ghana, Ghana means song singing, and who can sing? This song can sing who is looking the past time and the feeling. And this, uh, they're singing that song. What is happening? So, Vilap Kusumanjali is mixed with all names, uh, music. Sometimes I say, Alandas Babaji's line is singing. It is a poem, song. So, Mm. Let's sing when they sing this, then they sing Ghana. And when they are forgetting, then they, the drama. Now, through the name, they want to call, please come to me. I am missing you. This is the only way to call you. To name him. Gananda Maharaj said no difference between name and Nabi. So we only way to call him with name. Both are important. Yes, that. Very nice. Radha Radha Gurudev, thank you very much. I hope that all devotees get a clear understanding and difference Gurudev explains so beautifully. Um, maybe you want to say something about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu singing in front of Chaganath's cart, a worldly song. <laughs> when, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Jagannath Puri, he was greatly absorbed in Radha Bhava. But also he was absorbed in Manjar Bhava. 
and from the past time when the chariot is going through all this Jagannath Puri, Mahaprabhu is <coughs> dancing sometimes before chariot, in front of chariot, sorry, in front of chariot. Sometimes he is dancing behind the chariot. And when he is dancing and chanting, he is always glorifying the Lord of his heart. And sometimes he is chanting in the such a way that Radhika is so present because Radha Bhava is pervading, is bursting out of him. And sometimes he is chanting in the mood of Manjari. So it's not easy to, to make a difference we need the guidance of Rasik devotees to understand when he is in mood of Manjari, when he is in the mood of Radha Bhava, Radha Bhava. So the main point is that he is not a Krishna when he is calling Jagannath to come in the meeting with Radhika in Gundecha. He is not a Krishna. He is Radhika and Manjari also, who wants to arrange meeting with Jagannath and Radhika in this Gundecha. Because this is the main purpose of Manjari to arrange this meeting and Jagannath is going in Abhisar to her beloved. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita is written, now you help me to remember, in Chaitanya Charitamrita is written when this pastime finished, when Jagannath is already inside of this Gundicha, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all associates was very, very happy because finally Yugala Kishore are alone. And they are very happy and they try to dance and dance and dance and then start to bath in the close by lake. And Bhakti, Prabhupada is mentioning Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He is mentioning his commentary on that part, small part of Lila, where Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is taking. They are jumping in the lake and uh, singing in the lake, splashing each other in the lake in the mood of Manjaris. Why? Because the Manjaris are so happy, in complete ecstasy, because they put Radha and Krishna, Yugala Kishore, to be alone yeah. in Vrindavan. In Braj. So this is what came to me. Maybe Gurudev has some more, like always, Rade, Rade, Jan oh, yes, Jan Jan Rade, Rade. please. Yes, please. You are more expert. So, Mahaprabhu dancing in front of Jagannath in the mood of Radharani, sometimes Manjari. Maybe for us, maybe Manjari. 
And so, and he's chanting, he's singing ordinary song, say, ordinary fiction song. So now I'm near river and liberty. You are, but not, you are there, but not, not like before. Your cross is completely changing, your mood is changing. So I remember in that day, which we enjoy together in the, in the river, in the very nice atmosphere. So Mahaprabhu suggesting in Radha's mood. So we are enjoying a near Yamuna river in Kunja. You at that time coward boy. You, you have fruit and peacock feather. Now you are where the king, Kshatriya cross. What are doing? If Manjari, if, if Manjari, hey, Krishna come with me. Radhika is waiting. What are doing? I bring you into the Kunja. In Brindaban. In Kunja. This is Gunjicha Mandir. So that's mood of Radhika or Manjari. So bringing Krishna at that time to the Gunjicha Mandir to Brindaban. At that time, Ghana singing is described Lira, feeling. But uh, not a direct name. Actually, he want to sing direct name, but many people there. So Mahaprabhu could not sing even, he, he did not say Yamuna. He did not say, you know, anything about Brindavan because if he sings, then some people may suspect. So therefore Mahaprabhu was internally, he has some feeling, but hiding externally say different way. But Rupa, Rupa Goswami knows Mahaprabhu's heart. He wrote song. And then Mahaprabhu see Rupa Goswami's song. He's completely shocked. Because Rupa Goswami knows Shri, Chai, Shri Chaitai Mano Vishta. Shri Chaitai's feeling he understood. So Mahaprabhu told, and he slapped Rupa. Why you know my heart? And he went to Swarupa Damodara. Hey, Swarupa Damodara, why Rupa Goswami, Rupa knows my inner heart? Asking question to Swarupa Damodara. And Swarupa Damodara said to Mahaprabhu, if Rupa knows, then definitely you give him special mercy upon Rupa. Otherwise, impossible. And then Mahaprabhu said, yes. Rupa is so nice. So I, I gave the mercy. It's something like that. So I don't know. This story is fit or not. I just, I want to share. Rade, rade. Thank you very much. If Gurudev doesn't have, doesn't want to say something or he cannot do it. Yeah, well, Maybe we can stop.